Maximum Settings is a North American cloud gaming platform. We classify them as a PC rental service, meaning you get to use a full-fledged gaming PC and not just access to pre-installed games. They have a single data center in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and they maintain their own hardware and develop some software for that service. Over the past year, they've gone through some significant changes. I'm Little Quick, and today we're taking an updated look at Maximum Settings. How do you get started? Maximum Settings requires a subscription to play. To sign up, visit their website and fill out the forms. You'll be set up in minutes. If the tier you want isn't currently available, they have a Discord that can notify you when signups are active again. I recommend hopping on their Discord anyway. Once they assign hardware to your account, your machine is yours and yours alone, so you'll never have to wait unless there's some kind of maintenance. Maximum Settings charges by the hour, similar to Air GPU or Paperspace. Once you have an account, you buy credit on their website and that credit will be consumed for each minute your cloud PC is running. To their credit, Maximum Settings doesn't nickel and dime you. You're not going to spend more on storage space, RAM, bitrate, or any of that extra stuff. It's much simpler. You pick a tier, you pay that price, and that price is comparatively low when weighed against their rivals on a hardware-to-hardware -hardware basis. They also give you a hefty amount of storage, so you won't find yourself deleting games every time you want to switch it up. They also promise great upload and download speeds for each tier. They have a simple tier at $0.35 cents an hour, featuring an AMD Radeon 480 or 580. There's a good amount of storage at 128GB solid state and a full terabyte of mechanical. You'll also have access to 10GB of RAM and a Ryzen 1400 or Intel i7-6700 processor with 8 CPU threads. Their respectable NVIDIA GTX 1070 or 1080 tier is featured at $0.65 cents an hour. The Ryzen processor is a 1400, 1600, or 1700. Also included is 12 gigabytes of RAM and double the storage of the previous tier. The best offering to me, however, is the 75 cents an hour AMD Radeon RX 57, 67, or 6800 XT tier. These are AMD's offerings that are comparable to Nvidia's forbidden RTX 3000 series. You'll get 24 gigabytes of RAM, 16 to 24 CPU threads with a Ryzen 3900X or a 5800X CPU and three and a half terabytes of storage, 500 gigabytes of that being solid state. So what's the catch? How do they offer all this at such a great rate, especially compared to their rivals? A big theme with maximum settings is using modified open source technology. They stream to your devices using Moonlight, an open source application originally designed for NVIDIA GPUs. They've evolved Sunshine, an open source app that works with AMD hardware, and Moonlight into the Maximizer so they aren't locked into using NVIDIA's hardware and prevented from using top-of-the-line GPUs. Since Moonlight runs on so many devices, you can connect not only from another PC, but from a Mac, Android, iOS device, Apple TV, and more. However you connect, remember you might need certain peripherals, such as a controller, mouse, or keyboard to make the most of it. The machines they provide come with the Linux Mint OS, a free-to-use operating system with many open source components that's fairly easy to learn and use. This means no Windows on any new accounts. If you've seen maximum settings footage running Windows, even from us, those are legacy accounts and aren't available anymore. New users will be on a Linux operating system. Installing Windows yourself outside of the Mint virtual machine is not possible, but it is a feature they intend to implement in the future. Turning on your cloud PC in order to play is done on the Maximum Settings website. Log in, turn on your PC, and use Moonlight to connect. For more information on the setup process, check our Getting Started guide. Once your Max Settings PC is running, you simply connect with whatever device that's running Moonlight, and you're ready to go. Remember to turn off your cloud PC when you're done using it. Maximum settings will run for five hours and automatically shut itself off to prevent you from wasting your whole wallet, but it's best to turn it off yourself. Linux supports a number of free applications that can do pretty much anything, such as GIMP for image editing or Kaden Live for videos, but you're not keeping it tuned to cloud office work battle. We play games. So what games do work on Linux? Well, surprisingly, most of Steam will. When running Steam on a Linux machine, there's a filter to hide games that don't run in Linux. Furthermore, there are compatibility programs, usually based on Wine, to help games built for Windows to work on a Linux operating system. So what doesn't work on Linux, then? You'll find the most trouble for competitive games with strong anti-cheat, like Dead by Daylight, Rainbow Six Siege, Destiny 2, and PUBG Battlegrounds. Some of these games are amongst the most popular in the PC gaming community, so even though most games are supported, a lot of the most popular franchises won't work. It's best to check the Proton database to see which games are running well. Link in the description. 
There are more ways to play games on Linux outside of Steam. Lutris is a popular Wine-based application that gets games running from all kinds of installers, such as the Epic Game Store, GOG, Humble Bundle, and more, including emulators and locally installed games. Check out Lutris.net for more information to search for games there. Again, link in the description. Let's try a game built for Windows that won't run on Linux without help. How about StarCraft II? It's relatively complicated for an install, as we'll need to install Battle.net as a prerequisite to playing the game. In order to install a game that runs on Windows but won't support Linux, we have two easier options. We could add it to Steam as a non-Steam game and enable Proton and see if that works. Or we could open Lutris and install it through there. More people are familiar with Steam, so let's try Lutris. Within Lutris, you have options to add the installers I mentioned before, but Battle.net isn't listed, so we're going to add it ourselves. I download the Windows executable and I tell Lutris to install it with the Wine compatibility app. With the assistance of Lutris and Wine, we can install the program. Simply install the program as you would on Windows through Battle.net and get moving. Once installed, the process to play is way easier. Open Lutris, find Battle.net, and play as normal, using Lutris like you would any other game launcher. I even ran StarCraft before it was done downloading to see if that caused problems with the compatibility layer. It did not. Thanks for joining us. I also tried a brand new game to see if it would work, Tower of Fantasy. As the game's so very new, there aren't many posts or examples of people playing or installing it. I'm able to get the installer running through Lutris, but the game fails when attempting to play. Can you guess why? The same reason Destiny 2 won't work. The built-in anti-cheat doesn't like our compatibility program and won't let us in. Let's talk about performance. I'm quite close to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, as I'm located in Cleveland, Ohio, United States, so I pass the distance test. I get solid stream quality, solid frame rate, and tight reactive controls. I'm running on the 75 cent an hour tier. I'm trying a number of games to see how it goes. Terraria runs natively and works perfectly. The same for Shadow of War. Monster Hunter Rise was great. It's a game that runs on the Switch after all, StarCraft II, running through Wine compatibility via Lutris, worked well for the most part. It looked and played perfectly except for two small issues, neither of which affected my gameplay. Vermintide 2 and Tower of Fantasy would not run, even with compatibility enabled, but both have anti-cheat. Total War Warhammer 3 runs natively in Linux. It's a very demanding game that will put your hardware through the paces and really stress test your machine. I ran a benchmark at 1440p, with everything set to Ultra and it hung around the 70 FPS mark, the hardware and performance of Maximum Settings is extremely solid. The theme of Maximum Settings as a cloud platform begins to emerge trying all these out. Hardware performance at this tier is rarely, if ever, a problem. Compatibility with Linux is. So should you get Maximum Settings or not? I'd recommend it if you're close enough to their data center in Toronto for low latency and minimal control delay. Also, if the games you favor require little or no tinkering to run. If you like tinkering with computers and coaxing them to work, then definitely go for it. Maximum Settings has great prices, support, and community. I've had little to no problems with the service itself. Pass on Maximum Settings if you're located too far away from Toronto to get the desired level of latency. Link in the description to Maximum Settings latency map to use as a guide. Over 120 milliseconds will be miserable. 40 milliseconds or less is the ticket to smooth gameplay. Anything in between that is going to be up to the game you're playing and your personal taste. Another reason to avoid max settings would be if you favor games with strong anti-cheat programs. Last, if you don't want to bother with Linux, you can't install an alternative yet, even if you provide your own Windows license. I've given Linux a chance, and I don't hate it, but it does take some time to get used to. I'm going through a lot of the growing pains of learning something new. Despite the massive changes to their service, Maximum Settings remains one of the highest quality cloud gaming options on the market. It's not a monthly subscription service, so gamers who are binge playing for endless hours each day would be better served by something like Shadow, GeForce Now, or Boosteroid. However, compared to the other pay-by-the-hour services like AirGPU or Paperspace, their hardware-to-price ratio and service can't be beat. For most people considering an hourly service, it's going to be down to location and Linux. If you like this year's overview of Maximum Settings, subscribe and drop us a like. If you have something to add to the mix, a better way of doing things, or tips and tricks, please leave a comment. Keep it tuned right here to the only place you can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle. A little quick out.